Hello, my name is Carolyn Pearson, and I am a hydrologic engineer at the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Risk Management Center. Here is an overview of the topics that will be discussed in this presentation on perception threshold input data. I will cover what is the perception threshold, when to use perception thresholds, how to enter into RMC best fit, and strategies for a defensible perception thresholds. In RMC Best Fit software, one of the types of input data we can enter is called threshold data. This presentation will cover a brief refresher on Bolton 17C flow frequency guidance focused on flow perception thresholds, and will also demonstrate how to enter perception threshold input data into RMC Best Fit software. So what exactly is a perception threshold? A perception threshold defines the boundary between floods above a threshold that would have been observed and documented if they had occurred and floods below the threshold that occurred but were not observed and documented over a defined period of time. A perception threshold is defined by a flow value and a period of time. In this plot, a perception threshold is shown at an inflow volume of 14,400 CFS. By assigning this perception threshold from 1889 to 1924, we are concluding that if there had been a flood greater than 14,400 CFS during this time period, that flood would have been measured or recorded. Since no floods were observed or documented, this means that all of the annual maximum flows during this period of time must be less than 14,400 CFS. In other words, when we do not have observations or data during a period of time, we can still infer some information about the magnitude of floods that occurred during that time period. This is modeled in RMC Best Fit using a perception threshold. Perception thresholds are equivalent to left censored data. Shown here is a chronology plot which graphically displays the perception threshold concept. The perception threshold flow is assigned during a period when we have no direct flood observations. In this example, the perception threshold is based on knowledge that the historical event is the largest known flood during the historic period. This means that all of the unobserved annual maximum flows during the historic period must have been less than this largest historical event. The perception range defines the region where floods would have been observed and recorded had they occurred. The flow range defines the range of flows that did occur during the historic period given the knowledge that no floods exceeded the threshold since no floods were recorded. You will want to use perception thresholds to represent knowledge about flows during periods when we have no observations available. In the example shown, there were no systematic gauge records during the period of time between 2008 and 2020. A perception threshold was assigned using engineering judgment. In this case, the threshold was set at 8,000 CFS, which encompasses the bulk of flow volumes observed during the systematic period. It can be assumed that since there are no flood records of large floods between 2008 and 2020, the maximum three-day inflows were likely lower than 8,000 CFS, or there would have been some documented record of those floods. There were two recorded historic floods in 1905 and 1919, which are displayed as flow intervals to demonstrate our uncertainty in the flow estimates. The town nearest the area was established in 1889, and the design memorandum for this dam indicates that the 1905 flood was the largest observed since the town was established. 
Even though we don't have systematic gauge flow observations before 1926, we do have some knowledge about the flows during the unobserved period. In this example, a perception threshold equal to the most likely value of the 1905 flood, 12,000 CFS, was set from the time period from 1889 to 1904 and 1906 to 1918. Then the 1919 flood occurred, and we can assume that if a flood larger than 9,500 CFS had occurred during the period from 1920 to when our systematic gauge record begins in 1926, we would have had some record of that flood. In USACE and USBR, paleo flood studies are routinely performed for higher level dam safety studies. The analytical paleo flood analysis approach uses field identification of geologic and geomorphic evidence of large past floods. The graphic shown here provides examples of features commonly used in paleo flood analyses to estimate or constrain flood stages. As we discussed in the previous lecture, when positive evidence of a large prehistoric flood is discovered, it is called a paleo stage indicator or PSI. Flow estimates associated with a paleo stage indicator are typically modeled in RMC best fit as interval data. Examples of direct evidence are floated debris or scarred trees that can be age dated using radiocarbon 14 dating or other modern dating methods. When there is evidence that an area has not been inundated by flood events over a certain period of time, or in other words, when there is evidence that there has been long-term stability at an elevation, we call it a nodding seedits bound, or NEB. An example for evidence of a non-exceedance bound is the discovery of a stable terrace with well-developed soil. Flow estimates associated with a non-exceedance bound are typically modeled in RMC best fit using a perception threshold. The last topic I will cover in this presentation are a few strategies for developing defensible perception thresholds. You should use perception thresholds when there are no observed flood records available. It is recommended that you base them on observed floods. It's recommended that you use only one type of data per year. It's recommended that thresholds are equal or slightly less than historic floods. And if you have the option of putting many perception thresholds versus using a single perception threshold, it is recommended that you use a fewer number. A few more strategies for developing defensible perception thresholds include going with the strongest evidence. If you have more than one piece of evidence, go with the one you feel most comfortable defending. Use engineering judgment. That's always going to be required when you're doing this kind of flood hazard analysis. Perform sensitivity analysis. This is a key idea. If you want to see how something impacts your flood hazard curve, make sure to perform sensitivity analysis. And of course, always document your rationale. You should always explain in your report how you came to your conclusions. Here is a knowledge checkpoint. Make your responses in the chat box. Examine this plot. What do you notice about this picture and how could we fix it?
A best practice is to not overlap perception thresholds with systematic or historical points or flow intervals. Note, best fit will properly handle overlapping data behind the scenes, so you can do this, but you should try to keep the threshold from overlapping the systematic and interval data if possible. Here is another knowledge checkpoint. Make your responses in the chat box. Examine this plot. What do you notice about the picture? How could we fix it? It would be a best practice to use fewer perception thresholds to represent this period of missing data. Include flow intervals to represent the largest historical flood events. Consider using systematic data for historic floods that are similar in size to other systematic data. And of course, perform sensitivity analysis. That concludes this lecture on perception thresholds. What questions do you have?